Hello and welcome to the Bracken Outdoors podcast. The podcast where we help outdoor professionals gain the skills, knowledge and attitudes to make a living in the great outdoors. So this week it is just me and we're going to talk a little bit about the purpose of bushcraft. So I've been doing some deep thinking on the subject and trying trying to arrive at at some sort something of a conclusion as to why people are attracted to bushcraft so if you're interested in that stay listening and we'll get straight into it so i have been doing a lot of uh, a lot of thinking and research around the subject of marketing marketing is not something that comes naturally to me like many people but it is key to getting people on courses, getting people out outdoors with us and earning a living in the outdoors. Because without market, any time that you are telling a story or asking someone to essentially pay you for something, you are engaging in marketing. The better the marketing, the better you do as a business leader. And that's something that we wish we didn't have to do often but and it is one of the hardest parts of running your own business or being self-employed or working in the outdoors is getting that business in the doors and marketing so yeah i've been doing a whole lot of research about that and i came across a um a diagram in one of Russell Brunson's books. So he writes about um, essentially how to create uh, business funnels, so online marketing funnels, where you move people from people who haven't heard about your brand all the way through to purchasing a course or coming on a session or or buying a book or whatever. He He's quite a decent internet marketer. I don't agree with everything, but for for the purpose of this, we'll, we won't get into that. So, he says there are, there are three main desires as to why people spend their money, particularly for things like courses and events. So we have um, wealth, so things that directly increase your wealth or standing as a person. Then you have health. Does this make you healthier? Is this, does it help you lose weight? Does it help you um, get more mental health? Does it help you run faster, lift more? Or does it improve your relationships? So we've got health, wealth, and relationships. The main driver, according to him, the main drivers that push people to spend money outside of their basic needs. Now, where does bushcraft fit in this this was the big question that i've been wrestling with um and it's it's an interesting one and the reason why it's important is that if we want to bring people into the bushcraft space and i hope many of us would want to grow bushcraft as a thing that people do it's a good idea to understand motivations and why people want to do different things. I mean, I've, I've been asked pretty often, why on earth do I leave my comfortable home and go out into the woods with barely anything in terms of amenities and live really rough spend the weekend there cooking on a fire whittling stuff out of sticks but what's the point why why would someone who has a pretty good living being in a first world country willingly take themselves away from their comforts and essentially rough it in the woods like what is that motivation and i think that's why maybe that bushcraft doesn't have a broad appeal is because well what's in it for me like what is the purpose of bushcraft in the modern era i mean if if to be devil's advocate do we need fire lighting skills 
Well, we've got electricity. Most things are a button press away. You can, you could live your entire life without needing to light a fire. I mean, the number of people that end up in survival scenarios every year are minuscule. You probably, probably somewhere in the region of getting hit by lightning. It's pretty rare that you'd have to use those skills in anger. Uh, what about the ability to carve? Wooden objects. Well, okay, maybe that is a bit of a financial aspect, so you could make your own kitchen utensils, but I can go buy a wooden spoon for 50 pence in Wilco's or whatever, and it'll do the job, and I can stir stuff with it. Uh, why would I spend two, two and a half, three hours of my time making one? when I could be just relaxing or doing some more work which will generate me more money than that 50p. What is the point? Why do we willingly go outdoors and get away from stuff? I mean, even if we go, okay, yes, outdoors are important, but why not get all the latest gadgets? You can get a tent that virtually sets itself up you can have your camping stove, you have a sleeping sleeping bag, roll mat, everything you need, and you just go out. There's a little bit of a um, little bit of knowledge and skill required to to say um, pitch a tent in the right place so you don't blow off the mountain. And there's a bit of route finding and that sort of stuff, but you can get a GPS that'll do it for you. Like you can have a perfectly good time in the outdoors without defaulting to basic skills or removing comforts so what's what's the driver what's what's the deal with bushcraft why why do we have this fascination with stripping away modern luxuries and i mean what, what do you guys think? what what do you think drives people into bushcraft it's not, I wouldn't say it's wealth. I mean, some people can earn a pretty decent living, but if you really want to earn a lot, there's a hundred other jobs that currently would do better than that, better than most bushcraft instructors. Yeah, if you're not Ray Mears or Bear Grylls, it's, it's tough. You could, what about um, health? Yeah. Now that, that's, that seems like, that seems like it could be good. I mean, you have the fitness aspect of hiking in with a big backpack, carrying around cast iron, uh, swinging an axe, using a knife. You, you're bound to, to be getting in your steps if you're out foraging. So, yeah. And, yeah, if, if we put mental health under there, now that's, that's where you start. That's where I start thinking, hmm, yeah. That actually makes sense. Why do we, why do we engage in skills? You say, why do we engage in bushcraft to learn skills? Why do we learn skills? Because we enjoy it. Well, what's the point of enjoyment? Point of enjoyment is that you feel good about it, and it improves your mental health. We do things that we feel good about. And it was every time I I went down a, down a rabbit hole, like okay, well. What's the purpose of the skill? It all kind of came back t to mental health. Like, why would you go for a weekend and just relax in a hammock in the woods? Why couldn't you do that at home? Because you get better relaxation. You feel better about yourself. Learning skills, growth, that's really important. Now, I, I, have, a, I have a theory that you have your basic needs, so food, water, security, shelter, so on. Now those are important. If you don't have those, you're not going to be happy. You you need those as a base foundation, and you've got to have the skills to be able to provide that. That's that's a given. Once you once you have those essential skills met, what those essential needs met, what do you go to next? Well, it's um, accomplishment, it's 
acquisition of skills. It's it's I, I think you can drill it down to three key components of sound mental health, which is personal growth, contribution, connection. And we could also toss in a fourth if called purpose, but there's a bit of an overlap there. The growth, personal growth. Whenever we learn something new or are able to do a new skill or able to cook a new meal or something, there's there's a bit of satisfaction in there. There's a bit of mental kind of patty on the back and well done. I feel like I've made progress in my life. I feel like I'm moving forward. If you've just going to the same job, doing the same task day after day, do you really have that sense of growth? Do you really have that positive um, those positive benefits of learning a new skill? And there's contribution. I mean, we're, you can be perfectly happy on your own for quite some time, but real, I think real happiness and mental health comes from contributing to something that's larger than yourself. Even if it's just making one other person in your life really happy. If it's just picking up a bit of litter on the way to work. There's simple things that help us contribute to others. And I think when we contribute to others, we help ourselves. And it benefits ourselves. And then you have connection. I mean, that's that's a real key. I mean, like I said, we're, we're a pretty social species. I, we we like to be around other people and we like to be uplifted and we like to engage in habits a lot of our brain the way our brain functions is tied up in and relates to how we work with other people how we relate socially to other people be connection with other people and real meaningful connection is really important I tossed in the fourth one there for a freebie. It's purpose. Now this is kind of tied to contribution. I, you could probably lump them in the same heading. But purpose is the idea that you have a reason for being around in life. You have a reason for being in this world. Something that you are actively moving towards. That kind of the reason to get up every morning is your purpose reason to move forward and that's really key so those those four things growth contribution connection and purpose i think are absolutely key to mental health and i think bushcraft fulfills all four of those pretty well there are some areas that it's a bit stronger in but real strong is growth there's always more to learn with bushcraft always I mean, you've, you go, yes, okay, I've lit a fire with a fire steel. Okay, let me try a flint and steel. Let me try a bow drill, hand drill, fire plow. Let me try making it with an ivy hearth board. Let me try the bow drill with a hazel hearth board. Let me try in the rain, in the middle of Scotland. There's always more to learn. Okay, I'm really great at carving. And, or skinning an animal. Can I do this with flint tools? Can I nap my own tools? Some of, some of these areas you could dedicate your entire life to and never be finished growing and developing. Contribution. I mean, that's that's a little bit diffi more difficult to pin down. But I'd say that most most bushcrafters are very keenly ecologically minded. And they help look after the environment. So I guess there's some measure of contribution there. That that seems viable, possible. How, and I mean, the everyone teaches skills to someone else. That's, that's a contribution. We're expanding the knowledge we have. Yeah. Connection. Well... Maybe it's no maybe it's not necessarily a connection with other people. Can be. Bushcraft camps are fantastic. Got forest school events. Yeah, great to be with other practitioners. Yep. 
so hanging out around the campfire with some good friends it's a beautiful connection there that you wouldn't necessarily get in a bar or I don't know watch your football match <laughs> you can see my biases coming out here but what about connection with the natural world what about connection with something other than the people yeah absolutely I think it's a connection with our ancestors as well feeling like we're walking in the footsteps of the people who've come before us. It's going, okay, this is this is how they used to do it. This this real sense of belonging. This is our past. This is how we would have done times past. It's how my ancestors would have made a living, would have survived, would have thrived. These skills connect me back. And I think they also give us purpose. Particularly for people who are outdoor leaders. And it's it's drawing people into traditional skills and bringing back better ways of living. As they're more sustainable, that help more people, that build positivity. That's that's all bushcraft. So I'd say yeah. The my answer, why do we do bush? Why do we do bushcraft? What is the purpose? The purpose of bushcraft is to bring us back to a more human state of mind and body. And it's a way to revigorate our mental health. I think that is the biggest category within bushcraft is mental health. And it's being talked about a lot more now as really, really seems to be something that people are realizing that mental health is the key component why we do bushcraft right from the people who i'm not putting them down at all people who just grab a, a cheap builder's tarp and a like a tin can and just go straight out to the woods with a kitchen knife and make themselves a shelter cook some tea and just relax after a hard week at work. It's their escape. It's it's the way to feel in control of their lives. And and I feel that as well. When I go away, it's it's all basic. It's just like back to survival needs. And one of those needs is relaxation. And you get it. Because it's enforced. There's only so much work you can do in a day out in the woods before you, you're sitting down by the fire going with a cup, hot cup of tea or coffee and going, yeah, I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to be. Well, one of the key things I've learned about marketing is you're not marketing a product necessarily or a service because that's that's catering towards people's needs so if you go okay this this cake is really delicious then you're marketing a product but and you're marketing towards a need or a want i guess yeah cake was a bad example but it's you marketing towards how people want to feel and what people want to achieve like what do the services you provide or products you provide help people experience or achieve what is the transformation that you offer for the forest school sessions that i run i've asked a lot of parents a lot of families about why they why they come to our forest school ses sessions and words come out like feel connected i feel like i'm not alone i've got other people around me they feel um that for the children it's that transformation from quiet shy child to one that's more outgoing and more willing to take risks and manage them what transformation do we offer people therapeutic bushcraft is about okay can we use this to calm your anxiety can we use this to promote well-being 
what are we offering other than I will teach you how to make a fire with a bow drill. That's a service, that's a product. But what are we hoping that they feel out of that? We're hoping they get that sense of achievement, that sense of accomplishment, the confidence with, I can light a fire wherever, whenever. Hoping that they, they gain these this idea of resilience and ability to, to carry on even when things are tough. That's what we're hoping they, they get out of it. We're not... Bow drill is almost, or whatever the original skill is, is almost secondary to what the person achieves. And I think this is really important that we adapt the message we, we put out and we go, okay, what are we, how are we going to make people feel? What, if you come on this bushcraft course, you, the person who's never been outside um, for this type of thing, who's never done bushcraft, never used a knife, never cut a fire. Sure, you'll get some skills that might be give you some status amongst your friends. You might go, oh, that's that sounds really cool. But what would really motivate someone in that position? It would be this course will transform the way you interact with life it will fundamentally change your life for the better now what a beautiful selling message what a beautiful message to put out there and go hey look you can transform your life for the better you have that power by joining this course you come here and it will change your life now you might say that's that's exaggerating hyperbole no, when I did my when I did my forest school level three, it fundamentally changed my life for the better. It made me quit teaching for one thing because I realised there was an alternative. That I didn't need to feel the way that I did inside a school. That I didn't need to feel bad for not wanting to plan every minutely for every single session. I didn't need to feel bad for wanting to work with one child alone and and help them develop and grow that I could actually be outside I could be happy and still earn a living when I went on first bushcraft course was okay you've got skills I've got skills now now everything is different the foraging aspect was amazing because suddenly I say this quite often, that, that wall of green that, that passes by the car window or passes by when you're hiking through an area, it got transformed into a grouping of old friends. When, oh, yeah, down the line. Nettle. Oh, that's a raspberry patch. Now that I'll need to keep an eye on, make, make a note. I'll need to come back that, there in the late, later in the year. There's, that is a transformation, and that's what I think we need to be doing. We need to be shouting a bit louder about the power this has to make your life better. There are people really struggling out there. I think bushcraft and outdoor space is a powerful healer. And I'm actually going to actively looking to see how I can explore this further because I think I want to learn more about mental health in bushcraft because from my conversation with numerous people and I'm sure great conversations to come bushcraft seems to be a really great component in getting people to to engage with the natural world and to heal themselves and to and to move forward in their lives, to gain purpose, to gain contribution, to gain connection, and to grow as a person. What do you think? I'd love, I'd love to hear if you can find a way to comment on either on YouTube or send send me an email, info at brackenoutdoors.com. 
I'd just really love to hear what your perspectives on this are. Like, is mental health the key driver here? Should be the key driver. I think it's really important. It's one of the defining problems, I think, of this, this century, is mental health. And it's only going to get more important. As we move away from our roots, I think we suffer as human beings. I think it's time to start moving back and start rediscovering old skills and old ways of doing things because of the benefits it has to our mind and body. So, I hope I hope this is this has raised some interesting questions for you and encouraged some uh, deeper thoughts. If, as always, if you would like to learn more about the stuff I do and find out about future podcasts and episodes and videos and so on, I'd encourage you to head over to brackenoutdoors.com. That's where everything is, one-stop shop. Hope you'll find something interesting from videos about fire lighting or not to blog posts about paleo eating. It's all on there as well as the future events and courses. So thank you so much and okay. Remember, make the most of every day. <laughs>